the Cherry Tigo 4 Pro that was launched in South Africa only a week ago and we got it on test already, which is a, a little bit of a scoop as far as I'm concerned for Motor Matters. I've shown you the car at a couple of the pre-launch events that Cherry did and you can see this is the top model I've got to tell you now. So it's the Elite SE. So you've got this diamond studded grill over here. You've got the low the lip spoiler effect over there with a foul skid plate can we call it. LED headlights which are pretty effective. We've tested them at night on this test as well. All very neat, looks very good. You come round the side of course and being a almost medium SUV, it's bigger than a crossover SUV, you've of course got the cladding round the wheel arches, down the bottom of the doors, these are all the important features, the black mags, 70, 17 inch over there, you can see them, all very, very neat touches that I think are important on a car like this. You've got the roof rack effect over here as well. All these sort of features you've got. The locking is quite sensitive. You'll see as I move, if I don't catch quickly enough, it locks itself already again. Things like that. But uh, in this world, you know what? I don't think that's such a bad thing. Driver's seat set for myself, as I always do. And you can see there's pretty good space in the back seat. You can see now, of course, on Elite SE spec, let me just show you while we're here. You've got, of course, the red stitching on the leather seats. You've got the two-tone on the armrest. You can see it very clearly over here uh, with the red, the red maroon color and black leather trim and touches to it. And then you've got the sort of in-the-door trim. The, it's almost a fake wood, but it does look quite good because of the silver coloring. So quite interesting. Then having a look between the front seats of course note you do have aircon vents over there for the rear passengers and below it you do have a USB port for the back seat as well so if you just drop down over there you'll see there's that USB port for the back seat as well all important features for a vehicle that you want to be known as being for family use and as a family vehicle that's what really counts coming around of course to the rear Let's pop open the boot quickly. You've got a fairly good loading lip. There's not much height from the boot floor to the loading lip, which is always important. Of course, you can drop rear seats two thirds, one third. These are all standard features. The boot is pretty deep. You can see your boot board is set quite high up, which is nice. And underneath over here, you do have a space saver spare wheel. Not going to say too much, you know I hate these things. So let's simply leave it at that. Powered by that 1.5 litre four cylinder petrol engine that puts out 108 kilowatts in turbo format with 240 newton meters of torque. The performance is pretty good. I must say I'm more than happy with it. So that does make a big difference as well. You've got unusual type exhaust over here it's just very strange looking format but what is nice about it is it makes it distinctive makes it look a little bit different and I think that is always very very important rear wiper as well and a nice spoiler over the rear hatch all features that you would want and expect from your family SUV let's get it on the road let's look inside and let's check it all out the road I find it very smooth very comfortable a little bit more wind noise than I particularly like the CVT gearbox I find ultra smooth easy comfortable let's click it into sport mode quickly and see what happens and see if it makes any difference I've just gone to sport mode and there's a tiny bit more shove and urge I felt behind you as you do that but it really is comfortable and easy to drive and smooth and everything else but that wind noise is just a factor I'm noticing and I don't know why it seems to sort of be exaggerating itself to me but I think I'm being a little bit over critical maybe on it on a car of this sort and in its category and I don't think it's really a major issue at all but overall just 
made a comment on our drive today that I just found this car extremely relaxing to drive. It's not the kind of car that encourages you to drive like a hooligan. It's not kind of the kind of car that encourages you to drive extra fast. It's the kind of car that says, I'll get you there at a decent pace, comfortably, smoothly, and very relaxed. And that's what you want, as far as I'm concerned, from a family SUV. If you want a hooligan machine, you want to drive like a hooligan, you don't want a family SUV. Not in my book anyway, that's for sure. So I think keep that one in mind. Well, behind the wheel, as we always start on our videos, you can see the instrumentation. It's digital. It's pretty neat. It shows you everything you want. Since I reset the trip meter, and I want to mention that in a moment, let me show you 107, call it 180 kilometers covered, mainly urban driving with a bit of freeway in between. We're showing 8.4 liters per hundred. I know a lot of people are concerned about fuel consumption on this car. So there's a figure I'll give you for now that you can pick up for yourself and see what you think. Why I said about the trip meter was, let me tell you, I couldn't work out how to reset the trip meter to zero. So I went to a local dealership. It's one of those that takes you about five different functions, pushes and into different menus before you can reset the trip computer. Come on, Cherry. It's resetting a trip, a trip meter in my book should be one of the easiest one touch little functions. But anyway, let's leave it at that. You know my feeling on the subject. I'm not gonna say any more. You've got your multifunction steering wheel, all works very, very well, all very easy and simple, and I can't say too much more about it, but it's there, it's neat. Your steering wheel's a flat-bottomed affair, leather-covered, nice, neat, comfortable, all on the top model, you can see. Your lock and unlock over there, and I'm glad to say we do get locking on pull-off. Thank you very much for that, at least. I mentioned you've got this trim over here. It's a plastic fake wood, but it does look quite neat and racy, I'd say. And all over the place, you'll see you've got the red and black leather trim combination. That is on the SE version, the Special Edition Elite only. But they are very, very nice and very neat. So keep that in mind. You've got your nice 10.25 inch touch screen over here. You can see it's set on media at the moment. It just is a very standard screen. It works well. There's all your different functions. You've got your settings. I'm not going to spend too much time. You can see what I'm talking about. It works very well. Just a simple little touch. And there you go. Everything you may want to set, change, do. And as I said, you've got to go into funny functions to get to reset the trip meter. You come down below. You've got your climate control air conditioning. Again, works very well. Very effective. And then you've got a line of buttons over here, a little almost piano key. Copying somebody, I don't know, let's not say. That's for home on the screen over there. This one over here, just bring it back down, is the very important one because you do have on this vehicle eco and sport modes. Quite honestly, on the launch drive, I put it into sport mode a few times. It did give a little bit of a kick, but so far on this test, I've left it in eco but it is there and at least you do have two different modes. Below here, your panel for your climate control system, haptic touch buttons over there, work very well, very neat, I've got no complaints. And this is your CVT automatic transmission. I know everybody complains about CVTs, but quite honestly, in my book, for a medium family SUV, CVT is a good economical, fair, option and works well as far as I'm concerned. You've got your electronic park brake and you've got your stop start system over there. Again, you know how much I hate those. I'm not going to say too much. And you've got a very neat spot over here for your cell phone. It doesn't have inductive charging, but it does have a roughish surface to hold your phone nicely in place. Works pretty effectively. And you've got a decent compartment under here you can slide that move it backwards and forwards to make it much bigger and it does even have cool air ducted to it if you want and you've got look at that two usbs in there as well as well as a 12 volt so you've got decent connectivity 
which is so very important on every vehicle nowadays and what you want. Now, of course, one of the features that Cherry have pushed a little bit along the way with this vehicle, besides, oh, let me show you, that on the Elite and Elite SE, you do get a standard sunroof. But now, just send the camera towards the steering wheel. And there's a button over there that on many cars is voice activation for, for example, making cell phone calls. But on this one, it is a little bit different. Because if you press that, What's up? you get a voice that talks to you and open the sunroof. Got it. Here's your call history. Oh, it's not quite following what it's supposed to be doing. Yes, I'm here. Open the sunroof. Got it. It's opening. Well, it seems to be a little bit of a copy on another brand. We're not going to mention any names right now. But you've got voice activation. Let me try one more time. What's up? Close the sunroof. Sure, it's closing. And there you're going. It works with numerous functions. You can open and close windows. You can change the temperature inside the car. You can do things like that, that will all work using that little voice activation system. The thing about it is, because remember, we're going to come to the price in a second. The amazing part here is the value at the price. Overall, I've got to tell you that the handling on this car is pretty good. It's smooth. It's comfortable. We've taken it on a nice little cruise today, and I've, I've driven this now a fair bit, and I've got to say it is pretty comfortable because there are a couple of clinches here. Number one, the price. You get the Tiggo 4 Pro in the same engine, the four-cylinder 1.5 without a turbo, so it puts out 85 kilowatts, and that comes in from 269.900. Yes, for a car this size. As we're in this one at the moment with the turbo engine, the CVT automatic gearbox instead of a five-speed manual, 369.900 for this one, or 10,000 less for the Elite, not the Elite SE, where you lose a few touches like the two-tone leather and a few other little things that you would lose that the SE has that you don't get. You get a five-year service plan. You get, a, let me get this right, 10-year 1 million kilometer warranty on the engine. There are terms and conditions to it, but still, that's brave. One of the biggest terms and conditions is it only applies to the first owner, which is an interesting one they've said. But I think Cherry have been pretty bold to come out with a statement like that, and they're saying something to the market, aren't they? Other than that, while I've complained about have, how you have to reset the trip meter, I'm going to repeat that. I did notice a little bit of wind noise more than I would like coming probably from the mirrors when I was cruising on the highway, but it's certainly livable. And overall, I feel this is a very livable, very reasonable car for the price range. For the Well, let me put it this way. It's a lot of car for the money in this category. Cherry have got a big task to get your thinking from the past, we know what they had a few years ago in South Africa, to the future and to what they've done now. And that, to me, is going to be their biggest challenge. And if they can get past that by making bold statements like that warranty, well, there's certainly, certainly, based on driving a brand new car, they certainly have a case over here. But I've got to say it's based on driving a brand new car. So one's got to see. But if you're looking for a mediumish family SUV and you are cash strapped like 99% of us are, you've got to look at this one at least and take it for a test drive before making your decisions. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor. I'll see you next time.